yeah, back back <clears throat> we did <clears throat> a lot of we did a lot of crown supercharged crown decks uh, up until two thousand and two. In two thousand and two, they came out with a Marauder. In two thousand three, they came out with a Marauder. So two thousand three and four, we built a ton of supercharged Marauders. And in both cases, we had to develop our own supercharger package because nobody built one. And what kind of started the whole Brown Vic thing is a uh, car and driver came to me and uh, they want to do an article on, on a uh, you know, sort of a, a cop car that Crown Vic, uh, something that looked like a cop car, but was, was you know, had great performance. It was really quick, had great performance. So uh, we, you know, we, we started working on, on the whole Panther platform and uh, came up with a pretty good package. Uh, we did our own supercharger and we actually blew one motor up in the Fort Proving Grounds up in Detroit with the, the, uh, the calibrators trying to get it right. But we found at the second motor, we got, got the calibration right. Because this is the first one we did. And, and you know, I have a three time rule. The first time you do something, you learn what not to do. Uh, the second time gives you a chance to figure it out. And the third time you sort of get it right. But anyway, the car that, that we did, it, uh, it was supposed to be a two-page article, and they liked the car so much, they turned into a six-page article, and they dubbed the car. So you can see this. You put that. Uh, they dubbed the car the Lounge Lizard, and you can actually go online and uh, and uh, Google uh, car and driver Lounge Lizard, and the article I think is, is still available. It's hard to do this when you go backwards, but that's the start of the whole Crown Vic thing. Which is the lounge lizard, lounge lizard, which uh, which was pretty cool. And just to go over the build, what we did for it. Uh, obviously, we did we did a, our own custom supercharger package. We used an Eaton supercharger, uh, and then we did uh, obviously it was intercooled because you really need to keep superchargers cool. Uh, it was uh, air to water intercooled, and then we upgraded the fuel system, uh, injectors, mass flow air, mass airflow. Uh, we uh, recalibrated the processor, obviously, and by this time we were connected with another uh, calibrator at Ford, who was doing the processors for us. And then let's see, uh, let's see what else we did. Uh, oh, we re removed the battery to the trunk, primarily not necessarily for weight, but to package the supercharger. We had to do some routing for the uh, for the supercharger, and you know the battery was right away, so it got. Move that to the back like what we do for Mustangs. What else do we do that? Uh, oh, we made some adjustments to the transmission so the shift had much crisper shifts uh, because I think the worst thing to happen is put a whole bunch of power into a Crown Vic and, and you're driving hard and you go to shift gears. And go, so we made a bang. It just shifts real quick. Uh, see, we put true dual exhaust on it because uh, a lot of the cars didn't come with dual exhaust back there and um, high performance had actually three choices in mufflers, anything from you know neighborhood uh, exhaust up to we call it authoritative, uh, so, and and oh, I went beyond that called aggressive. So we had three different exhaust packages we could put on them. Let's see. Okay, so we we developed a, a subframe system. Uh, everybody knows I'm into subframes, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And let's see, uh, and we did sport touring. We changed springs. We changed shocks. Uh, sway bars, uh, just the front sway bar, not the back sway bar. And uh, we have we upgraded on like the factory uh, style wheels. We had 255, 50, 16, but we also had a 17 and 18 inch wheel option. Back then, 18 inch wheels, ooh, those are big. <laughs> Today, they're you know, not, not that big. Let's see what else did we do. Oh, this is kind of neat. We put a dead foot, uh, a, a dead pedal your left foot in there because uh, everybody knows that you know if you're going around the corner you need to brace that left foot so all our must all our performance mustangs back then had a had a, a dead pedal for the left foot so we put one in the crown dick we actually had to create a special bracket for that and then you know, all those were built just one at a time you know, but back then the the uh, the panther package now this this these numbers are just crazy i mean you could you could buy the crown vic for like 29 uh, and then the, uh, the supercharger package was about 20 uh, to do that same package a day would almost cost twice as much. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. And then we had also had a high output option, which we, we cranked everything up 
uh, and uh, that was n another six grand. So, you know, you know, 55 grand back then was a lot of money, but it was a lot of car. But then, like in 2003, we had zero inquiries on Crown Vicks. Everybody wanted a Marauder. So we developed a Marauder package. And this is, this was car and driver. It doesn't say what year. It had to be 2003 or 2004 by Larry Webster. <laughs> So there, there's the there's the Marauder that was in car and driver Marauder S, and then also uh, it was in Auto Week, and uh, that was the article in Auto Week. It was pretty complimentary. In fact, Auto Week, uh, Dutch Mandel was one of the the uh, main big editor guys. Uh, had it for like a weekend or so, and his kids referred to it as the Berserker because these these Marauders were fast. I mean, they were really really fast. Uh, you know, you get next to like a Corvette stoplight, you know, see you later. Uh, they were really quick. So that's kind of like the story on Crown Vicks.